Hey, Carl, now that Pulsar Security is going to be sponsoring the podcast directly, you want to hear the ad copy that we came up with? Sure, yeah. Okay, get ready for this. In a world full of security challenges. No, no, no. <laughs> we can't say in a world. Come on, that Dude, sounds that's perfect. Like a, well, you think we should? <laughs> it's like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie you cliche. You think we should leave it open <laughs> in for a services on Mars? Is that what you're saying? I mean, it's... <laughs> you can't. Okay. All right, All right. Just go ahead and read the rest of it. Can I say in a world or no? Go for it. I don't care. In a world full of security challenges. Trust is everything. Well, that's true. At Pulsar Security, we are enabling organizations to thrive safely in an ever-changing digital world. Yeah. Our experts conduct cutting-edge cybersecurity services, ensuring your business stays one step ahead of threats. All good. Experience peace of mind as we deliver robust solutions tailored to your needs. Your security is our priority. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Choose Pulsar Security for a safer tomorrow. Visit us at (laughs) PulsarSecurity.com. Empower your digital journey with confidence. Security starts here. Okay. I like everything but okay. in a world. world. It worked for Batman. <laughs> I do like to this dress dark and in hoodies. <laughs> now, this is serious stuff here, man. You're talking about keeping companies we safe. Do. Yeah, we are talking about yeah. that. Like cyber superheroes. Come on, Carl. Conjure up images of the predator, you know? <laughs> well, we should have done this from the start. So now we are officially All sponsoring right. Paul's, uh, security this week by Pulsar Security. Well, good luck with your ad. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had an interesting week. Um, uh, our mailman kind of freaked out oh when she accidentally saw me naked. Oh, okay. Yeah. So did all the other people at the post office. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> oh, you're that guy. Freaked out. <laughs> and you made bail. Good for you. Uh... <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? Patrick, how you you, doing? You just got home from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, flying cross country. Red eye. Oh Mm -hmm. man, red eye. So that's why you're you sound a little top of the morning to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but we. I'm still motivated for another episode of Security this week. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. There's uh, some shocking things that happened this week. Let's let's get into them. Uh, Shocking? You mean WordPress? Well, that's not. Sh- that's kind of <laughs> yawn, but but it is shocking. It's a critical SQL injection vulnerability that was found in a WordPress plugin. I know with two hundred thousand installations. Uh, it was the ultimate member WordPress plugin, which sounds like the name of uh, uh, a James Bond film, doesn't it? Right, mm-hmm. right, like yeah. an Austin Powers film. Austin Powers, yeah. It's yeah. funny that. If you ask every developer about security, like, yeah, I know how to do, yeah, I know how to prevent SQL injections. That's mm. the one thing they all claim to know how to stop, and yet right. we're still seeing them. So what's interesting about this one, too, is it says that it was a flaw in their um, text sanitization protocol. Huh. And this is something Patrick's always talked about, hmm. like um, where oh. a lot of developers look for bad things. They're trying to find, they're trying to prevent bad stuff instead of making sure they only accept good stuff. Mm-hmm. That's yep. that's the flaw, right? In other words, trying to find a fix after the it, it's already happened, not to prevent it in the first place. Well, so for example, the, if if I if I want to make sure the word delete is not in your response. And I also want to make sure that semicolons or dashes are not in your response. Mm. If I know the order, if I can detect the order that you do those checks Mm -hmm. and you do removals, I can put DEL dash ETE and you won't find the word delete, Mm. but you will find the dashes and remove them and put the word delete in. And so it's an arms race at that point. So instead what you should be doing is making sure that if you expect 10 characters of text, you should regex and make sure that you only accept 10 characters of text. Right. And instead of trying to fix their data, you throw it away if it doesn't conform to the correct format. It's kind of like the New York City Transit Authority showing up at an intersection and saying, so where are we going to stack the bodies? <laughs> right. <laughs> and honestly, I'd say... On top of that, because you should check, you should always check to see what the input is that users are giving you. Mm -hmm. But then there are um, database query safe ways that don't allow injection, right? Mm -hmm. If you're using a SQL server backend, Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You can use parameterized queries mm-hmm. where, where right. it doesn't matter what the user types and they're not going to be able to inject it. And, and each database and programming language has their own way of doing this, but it's rare that there's not a way to do this. Yeah. Um, so there are better ways to query backends. Yeah. A lot of people think that that's only for like text boxes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they won't do it for combo boxes, drop down boxes, list boxes, things mm-hmm. that they think, well, the user doesn't have any control, but the user controls the web page. And they can modify it. And there's a tool we use called Burp Suite and other tools like that. Postman. Where you can Mm -hmm. manipulate the page and change the options so that it Mm -hmm. can be whatever you want it to be. So you can't think monolithically about SQL injection that it's just text fields. Any field that you give to the user can be manipulated. And let's not forget that a web page is nothing but a UI version of a lot of data. And oh, when yeah. you submit data, you're just it's just a, it's yeah. a session. It's a socket. So anybody with Postman or some other thing can get on there and say and you know, figure out what it's expecting and just completely munge it, write a little script and yep. boom, you're done. Yeah. So be careful out there, kids. Always use protection. <laughs> I guess friends, that's what I'm friends saying. Friends don't let friends use WordPress plugins. Absolutely. Oof. Oof. Actually, WordPress, we've said this before. WordPress can be a stable, oh, yeah. secure site. Man, yeah, just don't use plugins. The, the plugins are really the right? problem. It's the plugins, I yeah. 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 All right. So I guess Facebook went out last week. Uh, I didn't notice anything. Did you guys notice anything? No, but I'm not big on I don't I don't spend a lot of time on social media. Yeah, I'm not on Facebook. I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. Like I don't doom scroll or anything, but I do post things from time to time and I keep up with my family and that kind of stuff. But um apparently Facebook and Instagram had an outage and it logged out users and rendered their passwords inoperable. Like it was it was really out. Yeah. Was that their way of saying go outside and play? Maybe. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's right. Maybe it was a mandate from uh, oh, wow. who knows. Um but anyway, so basically Meta confirmed that they had an outage and they said their engineering teams are aware and are looking into it. And then it came back online, but they never said what caused the outage. Yeah, that's weird. So everyone, like when the AT&T outage happened a, a, a week ago, so ago, mm. many, many, many people assumed it was an attack. Right. And I think you're going to see the same kind of assumptions here because a lot of people are just like negative about everything. And I, what is it? Never, never attribute to malice what can be explained by incompetence. Yeah, Hanlon's mm. razor. That's right. Yeah. So, and, and not only <laughs> incompetence, but maybe just like, you know, embarrassment. Like, sure. Perhaps they. Bad configuration. Was, yeah. Or the they had a rogue programmer or something who did something stupid and it was uh, not caught, you know. Maybe. I mean, I, I, I think knows? it's very likely they just had an outage. I mean, we used to expect outages all the time. You know, downtime was measured. Right. 99.9% uptime I was still nines. three days down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So I, I think we've gotten spoiled by, you know, this, you know, things are always up. So therefore it must be a, an attack. I think we should probably assume that most of the time it's going to just be a, a self-inflicted wound as opposed to yeah. some massive splashy attack. Or a blip. That doesn't mean we're not getting attacked all the time. It's just companies no. like Facebook and Microsoft are pretty good at fending those off and keeping yeah. them from taking down their platforms. Well, all right. This next one is um, about Team City, which is a JetBrains product. And people who aren't programmers who are listening to this, this is a you know tool that programmers use for uh, CICD pipelines and DevOps and that kind of stuff. So um, additional critical security issues affecting Team City on premises uh, were updated. So this was on March 5th on the Team City blog. Um, they were updated, they were patched, but it, it was a pretty pretty bad uh, problem. Huh? Yeah, server takeover is no no joke. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and Team City. Um, so it's it's a server, right? You install mm-hmm. it, and it does continuous integration and deployment. Um, and yep. and it supports multiple languages, all sorts of different things. So if you have a development pipeline, or you develop in you know JetBrains, and you would deploy your code to this server, and it would build it and push it out and do some tests and whatever whatever it is your uh, pipeline does. Um, and this, yeah, this was a CVSS score of nine point eight. Um, it was a bypass 
That allowed a uh, bypass of authentication and you could gain administrative control over the team city server. Hmm. Now you'd say Not to yourself, good. okay, like who cares? Right. Um, if you know, somebody who shouldn't have admin access could get active admin access and, and there's even a Metasploit plugin, which makes it even easier for us to hmm. exploit these servers. Um, so you get on that server and you have admin who cares? Well, um, we've seen a lot of attacks in supply chain recently. Mm -hmm. where code pipelines can get infected and then you start deploying your code. So let's say, for example, the three of us, we have this team city server and, and we're, we're building big applications and, you know, putting out patches and that sort of stuff. And somebody were able to infect Mm. our build server Mm. and add a little piece of code in there that would make our software, you know, less secure, more vulnerable. Um, we wouldn't see it. Right, because it would right. be in the build server. It wouldn't be in our code base initially. It would be signed. It would be signed. But we get blamed for it when our customers, uh, yeah, get get ruined. This is a recipe for a supply chain attack like Solar Winds. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and you could you could put something inside of you know a production piece of software that would make it out into the wild that even the mm-hmm. developers might not see when they right. review the code base. Right, because they wouldn't like, see it. It would be on the build server. It's added after the build, and during yeah. the build process. It's like using yeah. a hypodermic needle to poison Snickers bars before you give them to the kitties. <laughs> it's right. evil. And then evil. if they check at the factory, they're like, no, these Snickers are fine. Right? Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. We don't yeah, see anything don't wrong here. About. Just the ones um, bought by Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Carl does not eat Snickers bars anymore. Right. He just gave them away. Yeah, yeah, give them right. away. That's right. Just give them away. <laughs> um, but that's that's why this one's kind of it's you know it's interesting in that you know uh, people might say okay well my build server who cares like if somebody mm-hmm. somebody's just going to goof around and, and take down my build server whatever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I think the more nefarious thing is if you were to take over a build server in some way and then yeah. from there inject into the code because that's what I would do right I would because now all the customers. Or have that code. It's a many right. to one attack. Yeah. Did you hear what he just said, Patrick? Yes, I did. I tried <laughs> because, to ignore it. <laughs> because that's what I would that's do. That's what I would do. That's, and that, that would be my one of these. It's criminal career advice. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. This next one is infuriating. Hackers exploited a Windows Zero Day for six months after. Oof. Microsoft knew of it. Ooh. This is this is a reoccurring theme. I love Microsoft in, in many ways. They do a lot of great things. Oh, yeah, me too. I've had a great relationship with them. But they very um, regularly will say, oh, not a, not a vulnerability, not a bug, not yeah. a bug. Pass yep. the hash, those kinds of things. And there's it doesn't seem to be any way to reason with Working them. Working as Maybe headlines like this will help. And not only was it a hack, but it was... Uh, the North Korean government backed yeah. this zero day. What? Yeah. How? I, How? Um, I, they can't so, blame people for not patching, right? They didn't issue a patch. No, not at all. No, I no, because there's a lot of times what happens is Microsoft says, "Hey, that's as designed. That's by design, right?" Um, so, for example, when, when we had the when we have what we call what we call pass the hash, right? Where I can mm-hmm. grab a hash of someone's password and authentication and I can then replay it mm-hmm. to another server. Microsoft said that was by design. That's literally how we design the authentication system. Yeah. Right. So it sucks, but it's not a bug. Well, it's not super secure, but it's not a bug. Um and and unfortunately a lot of things do fall in that category where they go, listen, this is how it was designed. Yeah, yeah well it's so. designed wrong. Need to yeah. fix it. <laughs> yep. You know, if I have if I have a car that, you know, when it hits a certain speed and stays at that speed for more than 13 seconds, it explodes. That could be by design. It's yep. still not. It still needs to be fixed. You need to fix it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Crazy. the way we've always done it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John Lennon. All right. Hey, Paul, you better come down to the studio. John's gone mad. He's pissing all over the walls, Paul. You go to come down and straighten him out. All right, never mind. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I, I do. I do love how it even says uh, even after Microsoft patched the vulnerability last month, the company made no mention that you know maybe North Korea yeah. was using it. Infuriating. For a while. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, by the way, we fixed a thing. Um, we don't know why we just fixed it. 
But. So go patch, go patch. Yeah, go patch. Well, I, I it, just to, before we move on from that, I wonder if someday we're going to see something like CISA intervening in things like this and saying, no, no, this has to be patched or else yeah. we're going to rip you out of every military installation in the world because Not, it, it won't you happen can't be trusted. Use some force, Patrick yeah. says. It force. Force. It won't happen. It Why? Won't happen. He, because that, well, that's why. Remember when Microsoft Patrick, went diplomacy. on their binge for yeah. security, secure code. Yes. It was because the Air Force threatened to pull their contract. Clearly, it's working well. <laughs> Worked well for a little while. <laughs> All right, we're gonna pause here for a, a break, and we'll be right back after these very important messages. And we're back. It's security this week. I'm Carl Franklin. That's Patrick Hines and Dwayne Laflotte. And uh, we just got done agonizing over this story about Microsoft in the zero day, but um, there were some an, an, there were some really heinous things that happened last week. One of them was the Uni- United Health hack. Mm. Did you hear about this? This made CNN. It made the news. Yeah, it was a cyber attack at at uh, its tech unit, Change Healthcare. And apparently it was perpetrated by hackers who identified themselves as the Black Cat Ransomware Group, headed by Janet Jackson. Oh. Uh, no, that's a joke. See, that was one of her hits in the it 90s. It was. Kids, do you remember the 90s? No, Back in the day. You. Um, so, yeah. So this this story came out after the, the hack had happened, of course. Um, there was a there was a few days there where nobody knew what it was, but this was a, a really bad hack. Yeah, they got yeah. they got pretty much taken to their knees. Couldn't do billing, couldn't look up patient records. Yeah, it affected the entire medical system. Basically, right. the hospitals were operating without, you know, without their computers. I, you it know, bad. it it always I don't know. It blows my mind when people attack hospitals and medical facilities. First off, they're not hard targets. Um, unfortunately. Because of the regulations around what types of operating systems can be used on certain types of devices, you know, there's a lot of times there'll be like an x-ray machine, for example, that's using Windows XP. And why? It's because that's what it was certified on. And nobody's taken the time to recertify it in the latest operating systems. Right. So they're vulnerable, right? It, they're not hard targets. Um, because just for, for that reason alone is because it's not like, you know, we always say here, go patch. Well, right. you know, at a at a medical facility, they don't have the ability to just go patch, right? They can't just right. apply the update latest all the systems. Patch. Yeah, they can't do that exactly. because of regulations. Yeah, because if some MRI machine then blue screens in the middle of you know doing yep. taking an MRI, you know that's that's bad. So, yeah, it's it's just infuriating when you see medical facilities get taken taken for a ride because unfortunately, what they should do, and this would be the easier thing is to completely isolate their local networks from any kind of internet anything. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, if they need to be on the internet, that should be an island. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. a secure island. Patrick's kind of looking at me sideways. <clears throat> That's what the military does, and it's incredibly difficult. It's incredibly inconvenient. It makes it very secure. Yeah. So I agree yeah. with you. I just don't see the medical yeah, um, establishment. that We're, we're having trouble a- getting them to not use Windows XP. Yeah. For their old systems. <laughs> right. And, and I understand, just as Dwayne said, I understand the conundrum. They, they have a system. They bought the system at high price. The mm-hmm. vendor put in state of the art Windows XP at some point, yep. and that device isn't due to be replaced for 20 years. And no, and that vendor doesn't upgrade. And so they're stuck. Yeah. They're not going to spend another hundred thousand dollars on a system because of the one server and they can't upgrade the server because the software is not supported anymore. And if you also think about it, Windows XP, okay, we'll keep up with the patches. Well, in order to do that, you have to be on the internet. And so Mm -hmm. once you go patch a Windows XP thing and set it up and it starts downloading updates, you're vulnerable. Yeah, but they're on the network. So zero trust. And isolated networks is what you're talking about, which is state yeah. of the art. That's that's the level. CISA, we're not talking about that today, but CISA yeah. just came out with their guidance for zero trust. And that's where we all should try to go. Right. But it's a very high standard. Yeah. It's very inconvenient. Yeah. And, you mm-hmm. know, convenience mm-hmm. is kind of a feature in hospitals, too. You kind of want to be treated as soon as possible. Yeah. You don't want to have to we, wait around. 
there was a long time when it was unthinkable that a hacker would attack a hospital. That was that would have been an act of war. Oh yeah. And now it, they're attacking food supply systems. They're attacking hospitals. Yeah. There's even been uh, deaths attributed to uh, ransomwares where people yeah. actually died because they could their records couldn't be retrieved. So what's the answer, Patrick? Tom Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Wow, that went. Make an example. That, just that blame somebody. One fast. Just just blame somebody and say it was them. <laughs> and damn, then- damn, shoot him. <laughs> uh, okay, wow. let's move on. Cyber News reports a large online dictionary leaks nearly seven million records. So yeah, this this was just, just bad configuration. It's just um, bad. This is MongoDB yeah. left open. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, maybe that was a feature. Maybe they wanted to make those records available. Um, So So they left, they left open their MongoDB server exposing millions of its users. And so it's an online dictionary and not as in the programming sense, but in, Hey, what does the word Glosby mean? For example, (laughs) left a server exposed to the public, revealing personal data, encrypted passwords, social media identifiers, and other details of nearly seven million users first of all why is a dictionary asking for all this data i don't know i just want to go to google and say you know what does this word mean i I don't don't have accessing this database is even illegal if they don't secure it i probably not if they make no if they make no configurations to secure it i don't know that it would be and i'm not a lawyer we're not going to give advice in that regard but it may not actually be something that you can be charged with successfully it depends because although they may have left the database port open, mm. unless it was a default configuration, username, no password. If they did have a password and the attackers brute force that password, then yes, definitely. Then yes, it's against the law because it mm. was they did attempt to obfuscate and and make it harder to connect to. But um, mm-hmm. if it was just completely open and completely default, then mm, it's almost like having a web page up just. Yeah, which would Anybody definitely be legal to hit. If if you mm-hmm. put a web page up with your all your proprietary data, it is not incumbent nope. on the on the population to not hit that page because you put your pri- your private secrets out there. Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't think has it, have you guys ever gone to Glossby? No, I never have Glossby. I haven't either. I'm ch- I'm checking it out. G L O S B E. Right. Oh, it covers yeah. all languages. 2 billion translations, 6,000 languages, 6,000 wow. languages. That's I didn't even know there were that many languages. I didn't know there were that many. Well, it's developed by members of its community, like Wikipedia. So I don't know if that means that, that they, they crowdsourced the, uh, the development of it and someone thought this was a bright idea and they had no oversight. Now, if Wikipedia got hacked and there was 7 million records, I would, I would think that that would be a normal... Uh, you know, an appropriate number, 7 million for Wikipedia. But this thing I've never even heard of. I've never heard of some of these languages. How Are there even 6,000 languages in the world? Yeah, apparently. Dialects and things like that. There's also Adara. Of- Adara. Has anybody heard of Adara? Oh, the that was me. speak it probably has. I think it might be something that's spoken in India. Really? Yeah, yeah. there's lots of languages. In the- We're kind of spoiled in America. There's, there's American <laughs> and English. <laughs> English, English. <laughs> yeah, you, Scottish is considered English too. But that's a whole nother language. Yeah. It's like, oh, and that, those don't it's even just count hard here. To They're not even in the count. Oof. Yeah. Wow. To all of our Scottish friends, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that as attack upon you, your character, your country, or your haggis. No, of course. <laughs> so, David if it's not Scottish, calm down. It's crap. It's crap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and what is stabbing the haggis anyway? Is that a euphemism? I'm going to go stab the haggis. <laughs> I think it is. I'll be right back. Pretty sure. I told you uh, about my neighbor, my Scottish neighbor, Angus, who named his dogs Help and Fire. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not tell us about that. Yeah, it made for an interesting evening when he called them in at night. <laughs> Help, Fire. <laughs> Uh, Monday's flashback. Okay. This one's actually pretty important. Um, Apple issues critical updates for actively exploited zero-day flaws. 
As soon as I saw this story, I went and updated my iPhone. You should too. Mm-hmm. Right now, your and iPhones, turn on a little feature called lockdown. Well, <laughs> if no. you're, if you you're as down. inconvenient as Patrick, um, yeah. I'm still living away. that lockdown life. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. Should Either be a, that or I'm just an old man who doesn't use his phone for anything but a phone. Uh-huh. It's a new reality series, Lo- Patrick's Lockdown Life. So when somebody tries to send me a contact, it's like, nope, sorry. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't need to see that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yep. Wasn't that important, I'm sure. So this is a, a memory corruption issue in the kernel that an attacker with arbitrary kernel read and write capability can exploit to bypass kernel memory protections. And another memory issue, a memory corruption issue in the RT kit, real-time operating system, RTOS, that an attacker with arbitrary kernel read and write capability can exploit to bypass yeah. kernel memory so protections. So if I'm reading this right, that means you'd have to get your app installed on the phone to leverage this Mm -hmm. so if i can trick you into downloading something from the app store or side loading something then i can use these exploits but this isn't a drive-by exploit like i can walk up you're right to you so it's still important still important but it's not you know like help fire it's not like you're Mm -hmm. scottish dogs (laughs) yeah and that brings us to our clickbait story which I think is probably one of the most heinous things that I've heard about last week. Over 100,000 infected repos found on GitHub. That's a lot. Oh, my God. So this is from uh, Apiro. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but our security research and data science teams detected a resurgence of a malicious repo confusion campaign that began mid last year, this time on a much larger scale. The attack impacts more than 100,000 GitHub repositories mm-hmm. and presumably millions when unsuspecting developers use repositories that resemble known and trusted ones, but are in fact infected with malicious code. So, this is like if you went to download Log5j? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Log five, like, not like five. But that's what they're talking about, confusion, where people might think, oh, there's a new version of log 4J. It's log 5J. I must use that. Right. Right, because anybody can put up a repo on GitHub with the same name sure. as another repo. Right. Yeah, And we've absolutely. seen this with domain, you know, uh, Googles.com. Mm-hmm. You know, you trick somebody <clears throat> into thinking they're going to Google. So you it's the surreal, same like, kind of thing. you got to be... Surreal, yeah. Yeah. You got to be really careful about the the name that you're going and, to. And they're 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 better than just cloning a repo and then putting malicious stuff on and uploading it and then calling it done. They clone an existing repo, so they take existing code like Twitter mm-hmm. follow bot or whatever, WhatsApp bot. They then put malicious loaders inside that code. They upload it back to GitHub under their own repo, but same name. And then they use automatic code to fork it thousands of times. So it looks like it is a super use, like thousands of people are using this thing. It must be legitimate, right? right? Uh, it's the, it's the equivalent of putting a shitty product on Amazon and having a bot rate it. Oh my God, yes. five stars. This thing's amazing, right? The right. same thing's happening here. Not that anybody does that. I'm sure. Yeah. And you, yeah. It's not like you could use AI for that. I had a snarky comment, but I'm going to leave it to myself. Lest lest I get in trouble with certain people. Um, Wow, it must have been real bad because you say stuff usually. It's just just stupid. Let's just leave it at that. (laughs) Okay. Too stupid for its own good. But Um, uh, yeah, this this one. That's the nefarious thing in this. Yes, it is nefarious. Just be careful, kids. Read it twice before you click, you know? Well, and the other thing I'd say, and I, I hate to say this because it, it assumes that you have some sort of coding knowledge, but when you go to GitHub and you pull down code you want to use for something, mm. read through the code. It, 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 and it's, it's one of the, the sort of rules in offensive cybersecurity. We go to the jankiest, seediest places on the internet to find exploits, etc., and that sort of stuff. And mm-hmm. one of the rules we always tell engineers when they're going through, like, hey, there's this new exploit for Apple, or there's this new exploit for, you know, Windows, and oh, I, oh, I found this repo on this, you know, whatever site, I'm going to try and try the code. 
we always say read the code first because nine times out of 10, it is going to be a format your computer code. <laughs> yeah, That's all it is, right? And if you can't read the code, then you probably yeah. shouldn't be pulling it down, compiling it, and running it. Yeah, it, it's not... I mean, can you use AI to try to figure that out? And you might be able to use that as a not as I a way to I say, like, no, well, tell me GitHub, what this does. GitHub has some stuff in it that is looking for bad code. Yeah, so absolutely. it's not like yeah, it's not like it's easy to pull off. Not only that, but when you know a hacker goes and clones a repo or whatever, they have a GitHub account, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. their butt is hanging out in the wind somehow. Yeah. Yep. You know, they Patrick just looked at me sideways again. Of course, they're not. Uh, they're going to use a fake account and fake names. What? And, and all this no, stuff. No, everybody uses through, their real name, Carl. They're going to go through, uh, you know, f- filters and things. <laughs> Mr. N. Korea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, are we doing a regular show next week? You guys going to be around? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, we'll think be I'm around. around. All yeah. right, good. We'll see you next week then. Nice talking to you. Right. See you guys yep. later. Bye bye. See you guys. Bye.